Good evening. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Really excited to be here with you all this evening. Uh, came all the way up from the Bronx, Northeast Bronx. Drove up uh, right after work, uh, about two hours, uh, but we made it, got here safely. I have the best job in the world. I am the founding principal of Cornerstone Academy for Social Action Middle School. I get to work with middle school students, 100% black and brown, by 80% low income, quote unquote, whatever that means, right? But I get to touch them every day, I get to interact with them every day, I get to speak to them, I get to listen to them, I get to engage their families. I've been in the community now for seven years, so we have awesome, strong relationships, and I can't wait to take it to the next level with our students and with our families. So I'm here to share with you some great ideas. I think great ideas about public education. Uh, I think public education is gonna win this battle. We're gonna win this war. We're stronger than ever. Opt out movement is making us stronger than ever. All the speakers here resonated with me very powerfully tonight. So before you take this journey with me or as you take this journey with me, I wanna jump into some core beliefs of CASA. And I hope you can ride with me on these. First and foremost, Children are natural learners, and they are all brilliant, whether they are special needs, quote unquote, or gifted and talented. I love the term twice exceptional. They are all brilliant, and they are natural learners. So imagine we designed an education system that tapped into the natural brilliance of our children. Imagine we did that, and it can be done. I love the story earlier about the sun who went over and walked to the lake. It made me laugh because I could see myself as a father just letting him walk and just watching him. And I could see my wife saying, no, no, come back, come back. Worried that he'll fall in the lake, right? But he mentioned, I don't know if you caught this point, he mentioned he sat for 30 minutes. He let him sit for 30 minutes and just meditate on what was happening. That was a great story. Number two, there is omnipotent power in our diversity that is totally untapped. Think about the history in this country. We've been separated since the very beginning. The Continental Congress only included white males who owned property, right? That includes slaves, that included land. It didn't include white males who didn't own property. Obviously didn't include slaves. Obviously didn't include women. And from that point, there have been structures in place that have continued to keep us separate. I think we win when we come together. I think we win when we embrace our diversity. Once we do that, we're unstoppable. We're unstoppable. Number three, the world is a classroom, right? So let's get students out of the box and let's do some sightseeing, traveling. I'm blessed to be in New York City. We're a train right away in the Bronx from Midtown Manhattan, from Times Square, from Wall Street, from Central Park, from all the museums. And I know Connecticut has many sites that you can see out here with your students. The world is a classroom. So whether we experience it through technology and take digital sightseeing tours, or we experience it by getting up and leaving the building, the world is a classroom, so let's use it. Next, the world can be changed right now, today. I have 500 and something friends on Facebook. I'm sure many of you have 100, 200, 500, 1,000. After this talk, once it's put online, if you post it to your page and tag 100, 200, 300 people, we can start a mass movement that way. Remember the Arab Spring, right? They uprooted Egypt and changed leadership through Facebook, through social media. Change can happen today. We do not have to wait for next week, next month, next year. We don't have to wait for the president, governor, or mayor. Change comes from the people. It always has, and we are the people. You are the people, you are the people, you are the people. Change comes from us. And finally, learning is a formative, organic process. It is natural. We're obsessed with standardized tests. We're obsessed with summative assessment that teachers can't even use to plan to help the students in their classrooms. We're obsessed with that. Learning is moment to moment, day to day, in every class with every student. 
If you have individual needs, I have to meet those individual needs. And I do that by sitting next to you, interacting with you, asking you what you think, where you confuse, right? This is how learning happens, okay? Let's quickly jump to what we already know. We know about the language gap. We know that moderately income and high income families hear and, and interact with 30 million more words than low-income families. We know this. This is data that we know. Unfortunately, the research doesn't impact policy, right? And the research doesn't get into the schools. But we know this is the case. 30 million more words, okay? Next, we also know the impact that trauma and stress has on the brain, right? So if you're in low-income, if you're poverty, that's incredible trauma associated with that. And we know its impact on the brain in terms of impulse control, in terms of future learning, right? In terms of future health issues, we know stress and trauma has tremendous impact on the brain. So if you're a child growing up in a low income community and you happen to be of color, you're growing up with racism issues, right? You're growing up, growing up with stressed out parents who may be abusive in certain ways, whether it's emotionally, psychologically, verbally, alcohol, or so on. So stress impacts the brain, compromises the executive functions. So before kids even get into uh, kindergarten, right, they've had four or five years of this. So we know about that, okay? We also know who graduates college and who doesn't, right? Those usually moderate or high income graduate college. Those who are poor do not graduate college. We know this. Okay? We also know about the widening wealth gap. This is data from 2005 and 2009, but we know the data is just as true today, right? Whites own most of the wealth, blacks and Latinos not much, and now we don't need to talk about race anymore. We need to talk about that 1% and that 0.1% who own the majority of the world's wealth. And again, this is historical, right? This is by design. And the only way we crush the design and revamp the design is if we come together is when we embrace our diversity, is when we move away from our segregated silos, whether it's in our communities or in our schools, and work together to crush this, and I think we will. This is my vision of public education. A messy kid learning th through play, learning by doing, getting his hands dirty, right? Dealing with a curriculum or interacting with a curriculum that's aligned to his or her passions, but also aligned to the needs of our society, whether it's climate change, mass incarceration, addiction, depression. I believe our curriculum must be organic. It is not a cookie cutter color approach. We do, do, we do not buy a curriculum from Pearson and say, here teacher, go and teach this. That's what's happening in schools today. You have high stakes tests created by Pearson then you have curriculum um, created by Pearson, and the teacher's being trained to implement the Pearson curriculum to pass the Pearson test. So teachers went to school to get master's degrees, and we're taking away their autonomy and their ability to be creative. Teachers are brilliant. Let them do great work. Let them meet the needs of individual students. So public education for me is very messy, very organic, just like life and learning is, right? How many people know these people? Raise your hand if you know who these two people are. Okay. You should know the person on the left, okay? That's, you know, Mr. Sean Carter, Jay-Z. Looks very happy in that picture, right? The person on the right is Richard Branson. Richard Pran Rich is that his name? Richard? Richard Branson. Richard Branson suffered tremendously from dyslexia in school. He struggled throughout his K-12 ed education. Actually, it was not K-12, it was K-10. Because in 10th grade, after he started his own magazine, okay, um, he was still acting out in school. The dean or the counselor said, listen, you either do the magazine or you do school. He said, I'm going to do the magazine. Long story short, Virgin Records, Virgin Mobile, okay, Virgin Airlines, that's Richard Branson, right? Both high school dropouts, both had to leave the public education system to find who they were. Who knows these two? You should know the one on the left, definitely. Raise your hand if you know the one on the right. Tell me if you know the one on the right. Mr. Gordon Parks, also someone who left school early, became the first black director in Hollywood, directed movies that we know like Shaft, right? That's Gordon Parks. The one on the left is the great Steve Jobs, right? Went to college, 
Legend tells us, never went to class, walked around barefoot, took some ecstasy, took a trip to India to find himself, took a calligraphy, calligraphy class, started Apple, and he couldn't code at all, right? <laughs> but he, ha he, had, he had something in him. He had passion, he had leadership, he had purpose. And once he found that, that's all he needed. What about these two? I can't leave my women out. Hey, hey. Uh, see, I knew someone in there. As I was getting prepared, I said, let me uh, make sure I get my women in there. Okay, the one on the left is Virginia Woolf. Okay, sometimes she's recognized for her uh, mental illness and struggles with that, but she was also a, a relentless feminist and fighting for women's rights. And the one on the right, Harriet Tubman. Okay, Virginia Woolf was homeschooled, to my knowledge. Harriet Tubman, I don't know about her formal education, right? But we know she freed the slaves again and again and again and again. My point is they found their purpose. They lived with passion, and they became some of the greatest human beings to ever live on Earth. These are our future world changers. These are my students at Casa Middle School. Very proud, obviously. I hope what you take from these pictures is you take, you see an engaging learning environment. You see kids who enjoy coming to school, coming to school. You see kids who like to have fun. One of our pillars as a school is we could have fun while we learn. Work hard and play hard, right? So the picture on the top, I guess your top left, yes? It's Mr. Smith, technology teacher, having some fun with kids in the hall. On the right is an example of a blended learning environment, differentiation, okay? Bottom is uh, Tamaya, just smiling. And on the right is that differentiation we talk about, meeting the individual needs of students. So my vision for our middle school and for high schools moving forward is not just problem-based learning, which I appreciated being brought up earlier, is a concept of design thinking. Design thinking is about uh, preparing teachers to embrace a classroom that is constructive and to meet the individual needs of students. Starts with empathy, okay, really knowing your student, and knowing what their needs are. Then we go to defining the problem, ideating and brainstorming, prototyping and creating solutions, as we saw the great example of earlier with the car, that was awesome testing those solutions, and then coming back and revising once you get feedback. Design thinking, I think, should be taking place in every middle school, every high school, okay, and should be a part of teacher preparation programs. So here's the master plan. I need you all with me. After this is loaded up, after we, we revise the TED video, let's share it with the world. First and foremost, we need birth to age five programs. Why? That language gap begins at birth. Brain development actually starts in the womb, right? I call it my conception of career model. So we need birth to five programs. Number two, we need K to five programs rooted in Montessori and strong academic intervention. I say Montessori because to be ready for the world's problems and the jobs that we don't know are gonna be available to us, kids need a couple skills. They need creativity. They need to learn how to work collaboratively. They need to think critically. They need initiative, right? They need to be self-starters, and they need to be reflective. Montessori Classrooms helps to get that done. Six to eight programs should be just like Casa Middle School. Just come check us out, and we'll model for you what it looks like. We talked about high school design thinking. I also believe we need to get rid of letter and numeric grades totally because kids are working toward the grade, and they don't care about the learning. This is about learning, and you can look up Star, Sta Star Saxteen as we talk about getting rid of letter grades, and grade levels are interchangeable. So let's stop moving kids by batches, and let's align them based on needs and interests. I need all of you to join us. We want you to be a part of our team. Thank you very much.